What's going on, brother? On today's video, I'm going to spend some time talking about the importance of leadership, especially as a father. Now, if you're a dad and any part of this message triggers you, makes you feel offended, upsets you, or makes you angry, I want you to know that at one point during my life as a father, I was the guy that I'm describing. I was this dude. And what I can tell you is after making the changes that I made and making leadership a priority as a father, I realized the error in my ways. And looking back, it's one of the biggest regrets that I have. When I was 19 years old, my eldest daughter was born. And I'll be frank with you. I wasn't ready to be a father. I wasn't in a place where I was prepared to be a husband. I wasn't even ready to be a man. At no point in time had I learned the concepts of integrity, leadership, and I was still living in a place in my life where I was trying to find a good example of what a man was. And there I was, 19 years old, a brand new father of a little girl, and quite frankly, one of the biggest regrets that I have is squandering the opportunity that I had as a dad to be an example for that little girl. One of the lessons that I learned in life much later is as a father, my job is three things. Number one, give her self-esteem. Most of the problems that exist today with adult women and their poor relationships with men have a lot to do with the fact that they struggle with self-esteem. They struggle with feeling like they're good enough and they've never had a healthy relationship with a man to make them feel validated and secure. One of the best things that you can do as a man for your little girl is to give her the ability to validate and appreciate herself, to not rely upon external validation as her source of self-esteem. The second thing that you can do for that little girl is cast a really big shadow. Treat her mother exactly how you would expect a man to treat her. Be the absolute best example that you can be of what a good man is. Be the most masculine, strongest, powerful leader that you can possibly be. And set the bar so high that when she sees all these dusty ass boys coming into her life who aren't prepared to step into the shoes that you've created, she doesn't even look twice at them. And the third thing that you can do for that little girl is show her what right looks like. Show her what a good father is, what a good man is. Be the example in every moment. I didn't do any of those things as a dad. And quite frankly, with my little girls, I didn't even value the limited amount of time that I had with them growing up. Now, my oldest is a teenager, she's in high school, and my youngest daughter is going on 12 now. Her and I have a good relationship, but what I'll tell you is I will never get back that time from when they were like born to seven, eight years old. And that's the time when they really develop a strong, powerful relationship with their dad. They need you at that point in time. They need you to be involved. They need you to be there. Now I have two sons and my oldest son, he's six. My youngest son, he's three going on four. And what I can tell you is I've done things a lot differently. However, the other lesson that I've learned is that what boys need from their dads is a lot different than what girls need from their dads. And so I think that for my sons, my job is a little bit different. The first thing that I have to do for those little boys is give them an example of what right looks like. And the absolute best way to lead and be a good father, especially for young men, is to pull them towards the life that you want them to lead, not push them. You have to show them. You have to be the epitome of that. Just like for little girls, you have to cast that big shadow. For little boys, you have to be that superhero. They have to look at you as the hero, the role model, the one that they wanna grow up and be like. And it's so funny to me because if you look at modern American culture, little boys that are five years old and less, their hero is their dad. They wanna be just like him. There's no one greater. And then as they get older, their heroes change. Sports stars, celebrities, superheroes, not dad. Why? Well, I believe the reason is because we as dads 
fail to step up to the plate and be the examples that our sons need. And so that's the first thing. We have to be that role model 100% of the time. And the second thing that we have to do for our sons, and it's hard because it's the last thing that we want to do, is we have to be hard on them. Don't allow them to take the easy path. And the reason for that is because I know when they become adults, they're going to be stepping forth on a lifelong journey towards creating a life, creating purpose, and creating a dent in the world. And I'm failing them as a father if I don't prepare them for how hard the world is going to be on them. Because the fact is, the world is a difficult, dark, and challenging place for a young man. And he has to climb that mountain alone. And I am doing him a disservice by going too easy on him. If he goes out into the world as a young man and gets hit in the face with shock and doesn't know what to do when he fails or stumbles or slips and he's not prepared to take the feeling of rejection, if he doesn't understand the concept of resilience and hasn't built that, he's going to have a very difficult life. I have to teach my son the concept of ownership, personal responsibility, and accountability. And I owe it to him to show him what that looks like. So I don't know if you know this, but I recently came back from a 13-year hiatus from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I used to be real big into mixed martial arts. I did Jiu-Jitsu, trained a lot, was into it, big wrestler. I eventually quit because I decided that I wanted to pursue bodybuilding. And I was okay with that. Then at 35, my son told me he wanted to do it. So here we are, going to class. And guess what? I had to pull my blue belt out of the depths of who knows where and put that thing back on and get back out there. We trained jujitsu for about a year. My son, he went from white belt to gray white belt. And he's starting to see progress. He decides he wants to start competing in tournaments. Guess what? I'm going to go and compete in tournaments. I'm going to be there with him. I'm going to show him what right looks like. This is something that him and I do side by side. Now, even today, we're almost two years into this journey. He's been doing it since he was four. He goes to his class. I help. I teach the class with the professor. Then after his class, I do my class. And that's our routine. There are so many dads out there who have this do as I say, not as I do mindset. And then they sit and wonder 20 or 30 years later why their sons are struggling with the same problems that they struggled with. Their daughters married a version of themselves and now they're dealing with the same problems that they put their wives through. Gentlemen, your children are going to do what they see. They're going to do what you do, not what you tell them to do. And the worst thing that you can possibly do is teach them that it's okay to expect more from other people than you expect from yourself. And I know this is going to be a hard pill to swallow because those little boys that you have don't have jobs. They don't have the responsibilities that you have. They don't have to support the family. They don't deal with the stresses that you do and all the challenges and hardships that you have to overcome every day. But you know what? They also didn't ask to be brought here by somebody who wasn't prepared to lead. That's your cross to bear. Your burdens, your challenges, your responsibilities, and your commitments are yours. That little boy did not ask to be here. He owes you nothing. You owe him everything. And so, yeah, you're right. Life is hard, man. You've got your own stuff you're dealing with, and you're not going to be perfect. But what I can tell you is that the most important thing that you have in the world is your name, your blood. And that little boy is going to be the one who's going to carry the torch when you're done. Your job is to train your replacement, my friend. Despite all of the hardships, challenges, obstacles, stresses, depression, mental health issues that you have going on, all the excuses and the reasons why you don't, why you can't, why you tell yourself you shouldn't, you're too old, the list goes on. It's your responsibility to be that example for him. It's your responsibility to be that example for her. And I promise you, when you stand in that space of leadership and you take complete ownership of that responsibility, it's going to improve the relationship you have with your wife. It's going to improve the relationship that you have with yourself. You're going to realize that most of the excuses and the reasons why you don't do the things that you know you should do are bullshit. 
I'll tell you right now, I've been doing the jujitsu thing for a long time. And as a parent who teaches these classes day in and day out, I see which parents are involved and which aren't. I know what it's like to be the kid who doesn't have a father looking for role models in other men. The kids whose dads aren't around, aren't showing up, aren't participating, aren't involved. Guess what those little boys are doing? They're trying to bond with guys like me. They're trying to create a connection with men who can be role models for them. And guess what, dude? I understand your life is hard and you've got the stuff that you've got going on. But that little boy, he's looking to another man to be his example. Because you're skipping out on doing what you committed to doing when you had that boy. And the other thing that I see, it's very common, is the dads who come and they watch. They hold their sons to this high standard. Tell them not to quit. Tell them to push harder. Tell them to get back up and keep going. Meanwhile, when I ask that same dad why he isn't getting out here, oh, I'm hurt. Oh, I'm too old. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I can't. The list goes on. I had a conversation with a father today. He's overweight. The man is obese. And his little boy is very talented at jujitsu. He's been doing it for a while. And he pushes his son very hard. His son does competition level jujitsu. He goes to national levels, international level type events. And he contends with kids at the highest level at his age. And this man, every time I see him, you going to be training today? You going to be getting out here today? Come on, man, let's do it. Every time, no, I can't, no. And it, another excuse over and over and over. And then meanwhile, at the same time, he's giving me the excuses for why he can't. He's telling his son how he shouldn't quit. He doesn't need to be giving up. He has to put his all in and go all out. So finally, I reached out to him today and I had a conversation. And I told the story that I told you guys tonight and the importance of being an example for your children. And I wasn't an asshole. I wasn't rude. I didn't criticize him. Instead, I offered myself as a resource. I said, hey, man, look, if you need help, I'll be at the gym every day at 10 o'clock. Monday through Friday, if you want to work out, you let me know and I'll be there. I'm not going to charge you. You can just work out with me and do, do my workout and I'll keep you on track. And I'll give you the tools you need to succeed. All you have to do is show up. Then when you're ready and you feel like you're in the shape where you're confident enough to get back on the mat, come out here and do some jujitsu. He didn't take me up on my offer, but I know that I spoke to him because he said, hey, I got these commitments that are happening over the next period of time. After that, I'd love to take you up on that offer. Well, guess what, man? You better bet your britches here in a couple months when he's done. I'm going to hold him to that. And do I have to? No. Is it my place to do it? No. But that's part of being a leader. You have to understand that leadership is not something you're entitled to. It's not a title that people give you. It's a responsibility that you take ownership of. And leadership starts with being the example. If you're a father, your job is to first be a leader to be the example, to live in a place of integrity and show what right looks like, period. There's no way around it. There's no excuse for not being that. And so I really hope that after watching this video, if you're a dad, it's not too late for you to make the same mistakes that I did, which is squandering the opportunity that you have to develop real, long lasting, deep relationships with your children and be that example. I've lost one of my kids because I failed to be that man that I promised her I would be when I conceived her. And I'll be lucky if I get her back. And I miss that little girl every day. But it's my fault because I decided that I wasn't going to take ownership of my life and be the man that she deserved. Be the father that she deserved. And now I'm paying that price. I had to learn my lesson the hard way, which cost me a very valuable relationship with my little girl. And I'm making up for it with my sons and my other daughter. But I can tell you right now, what they want is you. They want your time. And so do me a favor, if you don't believe me and your child is involved in a sport or they do something extracurricular that they enjoy, the next time they're doing it, why don't you go ask them how they would feel about you doing it with them? I can guarantee you just by asking, their faces will light up. They'll want you to be there with them. Those kids are yearning for a relationship with you. They want you to be actively involved and participating. You should be a participant in the lives of your children, not an observer. So I hope this video was valuable for you. 
And if you don't know me, my name is Josh Holyfield. This is the Josh Holyfield podcast. And I have made the commitment to doing these videos every single day. So if you feel like this video, this message and what I provided for you today was valuable and it can help someone that you know, send it over to them. I will be here tomorrow with another video for you. I look forward to seeing you and stay vigilant.